I want to talk to you about that part of you and that part of me that is this crucial for how we behave. Mine weighs about three pounds, and so does yours. And it influences everything we do. What am I talking about? The brain, you might say? Well, what if I told you it was the bacteria within your gut that I'm talking about? Yes, those pesky little critters might be the master puppeteers of our brain and our body. What's in our gut can affect our emotion. Well, it mightn't be as out there as you might first think. We use it in our everyday language. Phrases like gut-wrenching, gutted, gutsy, gut feelings, gut instincts, butterflies in our tummy to portray a raft of human emotions. And this concept of a bi-directional gut-brain interaction, well, it's not new at all. L let me take you back. 200 years almost. We're in rural Michigan in the 1820s. And here we have a US Army sergeant um, who, and surgeon, William S. Beaumont. And Beaumont had a very famous patient, a Canadian fur trader named Alexis St. Martin. Now, poor St. Martin developed a, a hole or a fistula in, in his abdomen following a gunshot wound. And Beaumont, being quite the inquisitive doctor, uh, decided in, in, in addition to, to treating him that this could literally give him some insight into what's going on in the digestive tract and how the uh, mechanics of how food could be digested. And so for many years, he kept St. Martin uh, as his human guinea pig, uh, testing uh, all sorts of concepts about, uh, that lay the foundations of modern gastroenterology. Now, Beaumont also noticed, and has written about it, when St. Martin became angry or irritable. Wouldn't you become a bit irritable if someone was trying to slam a, a slab of corned beef into your abdomen? Well, he noticed that this affected the rate of digestion. Therefore, that our emotions and how we feel could affect what's going on in our gut. And this laid the tenants for all of what we know in gut-brain interactions. With the advent of uh, human brain imaging later, we could actually then visualize in the brain what's happening in the reciprocal of way that stimulation of the gut could activate key circuits, these neuronal circuits that are underlying our gut feelings uh, in the brain. Then, in the last few years, we have a new player. That is these gut microbes, what we call the microbiota. And these are potentially the master drivers along this neural communication highway. We have way more bacteria in our guts than we do cells in our body. And what we're beginning to appreciate is that these bugs could be the culprits when, uh, in how you feel when someone is bugging you. For the most part, we get our bacteria uh, as we are born, as we are being delivered uh, through the birth canal from our mothers. So yes, Another thing we can blame our mothers for. Wouldn't Freud be happy? Um, if we're born by caesarean section, though, our bacteria are different. They come from the hospital or from the skin. And there are many other factors that influence the composition of the bacteria in early life. Uh, factors such as uh, infection, uh, mode of food provision, whether you're bottle fed or breastfed, uh, stress, and antibiotic use. And all, all of these could impact on how the gut bacteria can then influence the brain. And what we're realizing is that there is a lifelong symbiotic relationship occurring between uh, the, the bacteria and host. And that these bacteria have a vast array of genes that can encode for hundreds, if not thousands, of chemicals. And many of these chemicals can impact brain function. The bacteria in our gut are like little factories producing key neurotransmitters like GABA, norepinephrine, and dopamine. And our brain is predominantly made up of fats. And the fa fatty acid composition of our brain is altered by the metabolic activity 
of these bacteria. We're beginning to appreciate then that bacteria could play a role in maintaining homeostasis. We've shown, for example, in animals that if you're stressed in early life, that this will be a signature in your microbiota all the way into adulthood. And this is concomitant with changes in behavior and physiology. Indeed, without these bacteria, things can go very awry in the brain. We and others use what we call germ-free animals to study this. Now, you've probably heard of the boy in the bubble. Well, these are like the, the mice in the bubble. Uh, they grow up without ever being exposed to bacteria at all. And when we look at them in adulthood, we can see that they have marked changes in behavior in, in terms of learning and memory and emotion. When we stress them, they have a much exaggerated stress response. They display autistic-like behavioral traits, decreases in sociability and social cognition and increases in repetitive type behavior. When we look at the brains of these animals, we can see that there is really marked changes in key neurotransmitter systems, such as the serotonin system. And the levels of, of proteins involved in plasticity, such as brain-derived neurotrophic factor, BDNF, are markedly decreased. So what does all this mean? Well, it tells us that our bacteria composition early in life is needed for normal brain development. And that perhaps uh, an imbalance might be a, a predisposing factor for a number of brain disorders. So also what this gives credence to is the concept of probiotics. These are, you may have heard of them, they're bacteria which have health promoting uh, effects. Well, could we have bacteria that would be, have positive effects on mental health? This is an area we call psychobiotics. Now, the field of psychobiotics is very new, and uh, we are still a long way from determining the exact uh, profile of what the ideal psychobiotic is. But there are some intriguing signs. For example, last year, a study from Caltech showed that a bacterium, Bacteroides fragilis, uh, when given to a, a mouse model of autism, was able to reverse a lot of the behavioral and gastrointestinal symptoms. We have shown that a uh, bacterium lactobacillus rhamnosus, when given to adult mice, was able to reduce their anxiety levels. When we stressed them, it dampened down the stress response. And basically, these mice were a lot more chilled out. When we looked at their brains, uh, we could see marked changes in the uh, uh, receptors for the neurotransmitter GABA. Now, GABA is the neurotransmitter in which uh, Valium works. And I've told you how important your mother is in getting your bacteria. So this gives new meaning to the phrase, mother's little helpers. The, the um, next thing to find out in this discovery really is what are the mechanisms of how can bacteria uh, in the gut get to and influence what's going on uh, in the brain. And we're just slowly working this out right now. And one way is through the vagus nerve. The signals from peripheral organs via the heart, intestine, uh, lungs are sent to the brain via the sensory fibers of the vagus nerve. And we, in collaboration with colleagues at McMaster in Canada, showed that if you cut this vagus nerve, all of the psychobiotic uh, potential of this lactobacillus rhamnosus is gone. So this tells us that what happens in vagus doesn't just stay in vagus, <laughs> but can affect your uh, emotions. We also know that the, um, uh, there are other means for this communication through the immune system, and that bacteria can produce uh, very active metabolites, such as short-chain uh, fatty acids. So all of what I've told you to date has been in animal studies predominantly. Can we translate this to humans? Can we take a psychobiotic rather than Prozac? Well, again, it's still very early days. But there are some promising signs. For example, a 2011 study from France showed that when uh, healthy volunteers took uh, uh, two different bacteria, they were able to reduce their baseline anxiety levels. 
And then a very interesting study from UCLA last year using human brain imaging showed that bacteria could dampen down uh, a network that's involved in integrating the emotional aspects of uh, gut-brain signaling. But it's important uh, to point out that most of the bacteria uh, that are, despite marketing claims, will have no positive effect on uh, brain function at all. And it will be a real goal of neuroscience into the future to try and understand why some bacteria have positive effects and others not. Perhaps the most exciting aspect of microbiome-based medicine right now is the concept of fecal microbiota transplantation. Sounds big. What it means is taking someone else's poo. <laughs> Would you do it? Well, you might if you had been diagnosed with Clostridium difficile infection. Here, in studies published last year in the New England Journal of Medicine, it's shown to be a life-saving intervention. So much so that now it's been tested in a variety of other disorders, such as immune, metabolic, and gastrointestinal disorders. But the question is, still remains, could it also be used in neuropsychi neuropsychiatry? Well, intriguingly, there's an animal study from a Canadian group a couple of years ago. And what they did was they looked at two strains of mice that differed in their anxiety levels. And they decided to look at their microbiota. And lo and behold, the microbiota was quite different. And then they did the fecal transplant and did a swap. And the animals that were highly anxious, when they were given the microbiota from a low anxious, it lowered their anxiety, and vice versa. So this, if it could be translated into the human situation, would have huge implications. Not least of all, if you ever have to get a fecal microbiota transplant, you should have a good idea of the psychological profile of your donor. <laughs> so in the 20th century, we focused on killing microbes. It was with antibiotics. That was the major focus. Over the last number of years, uh, and we have really appreciated that the microbes have so much benefit and that they, the power can be harnessed in both health and disease. So perhaps the secret to our own happiness may not lie in the self-help section of the local bookstore, but maybe within, in your microbiome, and that your state of mind might be dependent on your state of gut. Thank you. <laughs>